Shalom, 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 shalom. Uh, first and foremost, giving infinite praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahusha, Ba'ashem, Chakudash. Giving double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom and salutation to all you sincere Akims across the four winds, pushing this truth with sincerity of heart. I'm your fellow servant, Kasama God from the DC camp, and I'm coming at you through the spirit and power of Yahweh. Now, this lesson, and um, I want it, and it's going to be entitled, um, Let's Get Some Things Straight. And, um, you know, as you see right here, um, I have uh, images, uh, false images of, um, you know, our, our Lord, you know, um, of course, the Heavenly Father, which we know the Heavenly Father's name is Yahweh. All right. The power of the Hebrew Israelites, the Hebrew Israelites being your so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. His only begotten son, his name is not Jesus Christ, his only begotten son, his name is Yahweh Shai. And, you know, of course, you have the angels. So it was a lot of false images that were, that were pushed upon our people to deceive the nation of Israel. So when I, the reason why I'm making this lesson is because when I um I made a video I recently um and it was on uh, the video was entitled um behold Israel's champion I right? and uh basically uh, at the start of the video right I had uh, this image um that I just google on YouTube you know and it had um of course images of um you know characteristics of um you know Israelites you know the southern tribe on the left hand side um, the, um, the northern tribe on the right hand side, and of course, uh, character, character, characterization, right, of, um, you know, Yahweh Shah, all right, the son of the Most High in the middle. Now, we know these are just, you know, these are images that you, you put on Google. So now, what happened is, um, in a common board, right, and I, at first, I didn't really want to, uh, reply but the spirit told me you know to reply because in the comment board uh this individual right here um keep it cool right said um that's a graven that's a graven image and y'all cursing yourself yourselves <laughs> posting that stupid stuff right and then he dropped down exit exodus 20 and 4 all right so seeing that immediately i already knew what he was talking about, you know, what he was trying, what he was implying, right, that we are basically um, breaking a commandment, you know, we committing idol worship, which, you know, again, you know, you've been in the ministry long enough, um, you know, you've dealt with this before. I mean, we've dealt with this before with the camp signs out in the highways and the edges. We've broken, we've broken this down before, you know, but there's always new souls, you know, um, that come, that, that, that basically... Uh, awaken to the truth and they don't know the whole truth so you're gonna you're gonna get these questions over and over and over and um i guess you know at first i wanted to kind of brush it off and my response was you clearly don't understand you know uh, 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 uh quote uh graven image all right you you clearly don't understand you clearly don't understand graven image we broke it down a while ago and uh, I said, Jake got to come up on a level and stop being spiritually lazy, right? Because basically, um, the comment that he made was just spiritual laziness. Um, is basically just reading the scriptures with face value. It the, the, the scriptures, although it's plain, it's plain to understand if you have the Holy Spirit. It's very complex. It's full of, um, you know, has snares, right? It's, it's gins and, it, 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 the, the scriptures can become a gin and a snare if you don't have the Holy Spirit and if you're not properly uh, 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 taught. That's the reason why Christian churches are going off. A lot of these other, um, all these different uh, organizations that call themselves Christians and all, they're going off because they don't have the Holy Spirit. They're not taught and they look at the scriptures at, at face value, right? So they don't know how to. I extrapolate. They don't know how to read. You know, they don't. They just don't get it. So the spirit would, you know, just dump jumped on me, and the Lord was like, you know what, you gotta, you gotta do it again. And um, so I was like, hey, you know what, I will listen to the spirit, and and I'll do it again. All right. And um, when I was pulling out precepts, it was even more, uh, you know, because the lesson is not always same, slightly different. So I was able to through the spirit pull some some more precepts that that I'm gonna bring forth, and that I didn't bring the last time I made it. So. 
it was it was it's, it's all it's all good it's all for the edification of the elect the hundred forty four thousand and one third all right that's uh slated to be delivered out of um the virgin daughter of babylon all right which is the united states of america all right so so yeah so he's saying well, hey hey listen you pull the image off of google that's that's uh that's that's uh exodus 24 Right, so what does Exodus what does Exodus twenty four say? It says, "Thou shalt not make, thou shalt not make any, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven, graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water un, in the water under the earth." So if you if you stay right there and you take it for face value, um, you know. You'd be like, okay, so so what? He, what is he saying? Like, uh, is he saying anything wrong? Right? Because you'd be like, oh well, you know, that's an image. You know, that's a that's a graven image. Well, see, this is the thing. It's levels of understanding, you know, and and this is one of the reasons why Israel always went off because they never truly understand what the heavenly Father was about. You know, who the heavenly Father is and how he moves and and and, and when he says, what does he mean? All right, so you know, so. Now, let's go to, uh, let's pull up the word graven image on Google, right? So, I'll pull that up. Graven image on Google, it says, and I want you to uh, remember these words, all right? Because it's very important. The reason why I said you don't, you clearly don't understand graven image because I knew when you made the statement that you didn't understand these words, you didn't look these words up, you didn't do your due diligence, you just read the scripture, you looked at, you looked at an image and you just put those two together and said, well, this is what it is, and that's just straight up spiritual laziness. All right, but us in Great Millstone, we've been taught, you know, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahshah, through our masters, our mentors, to do the work, all right, to get into the details, all right. So we go to a graven image, and it says a carved. I want you to remember that word, because remember the most I said, you should not, what, you should not set up any, you know, uh, uh, you should not make unto thee graven, any graven image, all right. It says a carved idol, all right? And the word idol, actually, uh, the word idol goes back to uh, uh, um, image, actually, all right? So that's that's something I'm going to pull. I'm going to pull that up as well, all right? So it says uh, a carved idol, all right? Because idol is, man, I got to explain. Listen, a carved idol or representation of a power used as an object of worship, used as an object object of worship very important all right but it says carved idol so if you're not supposed to carve idol so for, so first let's go with graven let's go to edible line you go to edible line we're going to break these and uh, um, we're going to separate these two words let's deal with graven all right let's deal with graven now the word graven says sculpted or carved all right sculpted or carved all right so and the word image right the word, the word image means what? Piece of statuary, artificial representation that looks like a person would think, right? Image, likeness, figure, drawing, portrait, reflection, statue. So you look at it and you're like, okay, well, that's the image or representation of, of, of a thing. So now, if you just stop right there, you'd be like, okay, well, yeah, what, so far, what is he saying that's wrong? Well, this is the thing. You ever heard of the Ark of the Covenant? You know, you ever heard of the Ark of the Covenant? Yes, the Ark of the Covenant of, of Israel. All right. Now, whether you knew it or not, the Ark of the Covenant is a grave is a graven image. Okay. Because how do you, how do you build the Ark, the Ark of the Covenant? It's simple. You go to Exodus 37. It tells you how it was built. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to focus on certain parts of the Ark of the Covenant and how it was built. All right. As a matter of fact, can I go to the top? I right, 17. All right. Construction continues. So we're talking about the Ark being built. Let's go to verse 17. All right. It says, um, <clears throat> Exodus chapter 37, verse 17. And he made the candlestick of pure gold. We're talking about the Ark. And he made the candlestick of pure gold. Of beaten work made he the candlestick, his shaft and his branch, his his uh, uh, bowls, his knops and his flowers were of the same. And the six branches, and then it goes through 
you know, it goes down the candlestick and, you know, you, 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 you want to be that, you know. So now I want to focus on this word of beaten work. All right. So when you go to the Hebrew, it says of uh, beaten work. All right. Let's look up the word. Uh, I think it's uh, my Marqua Marqua Shana, if I'm saying it right. All right. So um, it says of beaten work, it says molded. It says um, rounded work, uh, i.e. molded by hammering. All right. So when you're talking about hammering, it's what? It's a form of sculpting. Whether you, do, you know, that's that's just how it is. The, and it says beaten out of one piece work upright whole piece. Right? Now, so you go to um. It says hammered work, finely decorated cultic objects of gold and silver. Hammered work. It goes back to something that sculpted. All right. And another word for sculpting is carving. Okay. And another another word for carve is graven. All right. Graven. The Lord gave the order, right, to Moses and Aaron to do what? To the 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 to carve the sculpt. All right. To grave an image on earth, right? For for Israel. And to have it and to have the priest, you know what I'm saying, have it and, 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 and walk, walk with the ark in front of Israel. And it was a place where you would actually, you know, you would go up and, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, get on your knees and pray and worship Yahweh Bashem El Shai. So right then and there, you're like, OK, well, that doesn't wouldn't that seem like that's a contradiction? Because, mind you, hey, didn't the Lord say? Didn't the Lord say in Exodus 24, thou shalt not make any, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image? So if the Lord is going to say, well, you're not going to make a graven image, right? Or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in earth beneath. Well, if you, but then yet the Heavenly Father gave the orders, specific order with dimensions, all specific dimensions of how to build not only the altar, Right, but also um, not only the ark, but also the altar. These are the graven images. So was you know was the heavenly father Yahweh in? Was he is he double minded? Is he contradicting himself? Like what's going on here? One one token he says don't have any graven image, and the same to the other, and and then later he tells him, hey, I want you to I want you to have this graven image. And it was not only the only thing; it was the altar that was also a graven, a sculptor, because you can't. To build an altar, an altar, you had to sculpt or carve an altar. A physical altar had to be carved. And that's what was used by the priest. Okay. The temple, which I'm going to show you right here. When you go to, um, let's go to uh, Exodus. Exodus 40 and 1. The tabernacle erected. Hold on. Look up that word. Erected. Hold on. I thought everything that was erected was was wicked the monument and, and and here in dc is erected we know that to be an obel obelix uh you know so hold up so you see that word erected and immediately you're thinking ah that's wickedness that's evil that's 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 against the most but hold up the tabernacle of the lord was also erected and when you read it says what exodus 41 and the lord spake unto moses saying on the first day of the first month thou shalt set up the tabernacle of the tent of the con congregation, and thou shalt put therein the ark of the of the testimony, right, and cover the ark with the veil. So, basically, the brothers that know know, of course. Well, as a matter of fact, let's get another example. Let's get another example, right? Let's go with King Solomon. King Solomon, this is First Kings chapter six. I'm just this is the third example I'm gonna bring forth to show that the Heavenly Father gave gave. Orders to men to have graven images, graven images on earth. Although when you read Exodus twenty and four, it says not to have a graven image on earth. So is there a, con con a, 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 a contradiction, or do you just simply you just simply don't have the understanding of what the heavenly Father was truly saying? All right, because there is no contradiction in the scriptures that we know. We know that. There is no contradiction in scripture. So every time you find a contradiction and then you can't find an answer, that means you lack understanding of what's going on. So therefore, you need to ask and you need to be taught. All right. 
So this is another example. First Kings 6 and 11. And the word of the Lord came to Solomon saying concerning this house, which thou art in building. If thou wilt walk in my statutes and execute my judgment and keep all of my commandments to walk in them. Then will I perform my word with thee, which I have spake unto David thy father, which part of it is to not have a graven image. The word graven means sculpted. All right. Image goes back to the idol, sculpted idol. Idol is another word for idol is image. All right. So let's jump down to one of the things. And remember, this is the this is the house of the Lord now. Right. So the most has given, you know, he's given a uh, uh, Solomon all the specifics of how to how to uh, build. And then you get to uh, then you get to first Kings six and thirty five. And it says, and he Solomon carved there on cherubims. What are cherubims? Well, when you go back to the ark, like I said before, the scripture says what not to have given image of the things in heaven, the likeness of things in heaven or earth. Well, the cherubims goes back to the angels, goes back to the angels. So as the heavenly father, he's given the order. He gave the order for the ark to be sculpted this way, to be carved this way. With the images and likeness of what? Of, of uh, entities that live in the spirit realm. So if you read Exodus 24 and you look at this, you'd be like, well, hold up. That, 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 seems, that seems like a contradiction. But the reason why you see, you believe it's a contradiction because you lack understanding. You don't have, you only know the, uh, uh, the scriptures partially. You don't, you don't know fully what the Heavenly Father was saying. All right? But, you, you know, so now when we go back, we go back to, um, let's go back to First Kings. It says that he carved, the word carved going back to graven or sculpted, right? And he carved therein cherubims. Which are what? Cherubims are idols. How do you say? What, 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 somebody says, well, what do you mean cherubims are idols? Well, the word idol means image. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It doesn't, the, 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 the cherubims that was carved was, were image of actual angels that, 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 that are in the spirit realm. It says, and palm trees and open flowers and covered them with gold fitted upon a carved work. And it doubled down carved work, the graven work, the graven image. So was Solomon going off? Was Solomon going off? Did Solomon break uh, uh, Exodus 24? All right. So I bought the third example. So now let's get the understanding now because we know there is no such thing as a coincidence. First and foremost, we go to Job chapter 11, verse 6. And that he would show thee the secrets of wisdom, that they are double to that which is. Know, therefore, that the most I exacted from thee less than thy iniquity deserve. The point is that what the secrets of wisdom is that they are double to that which is. Basically, the scripture, when you go to Exodus 20, the 20th chapter and the fourth verse. First, you have to read, you also have to read the fifth verse because it shows you that there's duality in this speech. In the Heavenly Father, Yahweh's speech, there's duality. And it's up through the Holy Spirit, which he still got to, He still has to provide you, the Holy Spirit through his Son, to give you the understanding to see the duality in his speech. Because if he doesn't give you the Holy Spirit to see the duality in his speech, then you're going to, what, you're not going to understand. And you're going to, you know, find yourself seeing so-called contradictions. So... Exodus 24, thou shalt not make unto thee any great graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Verse 5, thou shalt not bow down, bow down thyself to them. So you're not supposed to make, first, remember, you're not supposed to make a graven image unto thee to bow down yourself to them nor serve them for i the lord that power i am a jealous power so the lord basically saying i you know will give you right the graven image that i want you to set up <laughs> you know what i'm saying because you have graven images all right in the left hand side all right the darkness the wickedness you have graven images on that side and you also have graven images on the right hand side so you have to accept that reality that there is graven images on the right hand side and there's graven images on the left hand side 
Once you understand that, now you understand the duality in the speech of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. All right? It says, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, thy power and a jealous power, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. All right? Do you understand? You can actually grab a piece of wood Engrave an image of a bird. That's that would be called a graven image. Right now, I can carve if I if I'm a sculptor, right, and I got skills like that, I can carve a bird out of a piece of wood. That is a graven image. Well, guess what? Just put that thing right there in front of my uh, my house. You know what I'm saying? Or um, uh, or maybe on the side of you know, but. Whatever, but as long put it as decoration, whatever. But I'm not supposed to worship that. All right, I'm not supposed to worship that graven image. Okay, do you understand that a lot of things that we do, a lot of things that we that men make are graven images. Graven means sculpted. All right, a car is a graven image, it's a sculpted image, man. They mean. You could sculpt, actually, you could sculpt uh, uh, the image of a car. You get, that's what I'm saying. When you don't have understanding, you get caught up in the face and taking the scriptures, you know, partially. All right. So now, by this point, by this point, you should already know uh, what we're going. So let's hit um, Isaiah 45 and 7. It says, I form the light. That's the Heavenly Father speaking, right? The Heavenly Father, Yahweh. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. So the Heavenly Father has what? Has control and he has made it so that you would have duality in everything. That That's just, that's the, that's the balance. Okay? That's the balance. All right? So now let's go to um, 2 Timothy 2 and 15. Study the show thyself approve unto the most high, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth all right so what we're doing now the spirit what i'm doing is rightly dividing the word of truth to give you understanding you know for the individual right and on, on the common board that stated what he stated which is not the first time we've heard this all right not the first time so now let's deal with the word um actually let's go to uh the main thing all right let's go to the main thing because the main issue really is you know when you go to um you know uh something you know sometimes we have a camp uh, uh uh the camp signs uh camp sign of uh Yahweh Shai, you know it's different different you know pictures of it right so the main thing is of course you know Yahweh Shai. so you look at this and he's looking at that image it's like oh man that's a graven image no we already explained bro but to go into depth you need to understand something the word it the word image the word image goes back you will see that word, um, where, where, where is it, where is it, right here, there's a word idea, you see that, idea or appearance, I'm going to hit you up with something, alright, Mr. Keep It Cool, alright, so let's go to Revelation, there's Revelation, the first chapter, it says the revelation of Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, right, it says the revelation of Yahweh Shai, which the Most High gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must surely come to pass. And he sent and signified by his angel unto his servant, John. So you want to go down straight to the point, you know, to the revelation. All right. So Revelation chapter 1 and 12, it says, and I turned to see. Now, this is John. Remember, John is speaking to who? John is speaking to the elect out of the nation of Israel. And what is he doing now? What is he getting ready to do? He's getting ready to give the elect, right? A description of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh So it says, Revelation 1 and 12. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven golden, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the son of man, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed it with a garment down to the foot, and gird about the paps with a golden girdle. So he's describing, um, you know, Yahweh Shah. It says, 
His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. All right, so the thing that you have to understand, you have to ask yourself, why did, why was it important for the Spirit of the Lord to jump on John the Revelator, John the Revelator, to give us a description to how the, to uh, what your house shot looks like? All right, why? Cause why did he have? Why did he have to do that? Well, I'll tell you why, because. Like I said, when you look up the word image, the word idea comes in. When you look up the word idea, all right, it says archetype, concept of a thing in the mind of the Most High. All right, a concept. All right, now let's look up the word concept. A concept. There you go. Oh, I like this. A general notion. An immediate object of thought, all right? Taking hold, a general notion, a concept. Con means what? It says to take and to grasp. It says con means with, you know, to take with or to withhold, to grasp. What does that mean? It means that what? It's an idea, all right? Basically, to put it simply, the Heavenly Father sent through his son Hamashiach Yahushua put the spirit on John the, Revel John the Re Re Revelator to give us a description so we can have an idea alright and the word idea goes back to image so we can have an idea as to what as to what the Lord looks like an idea not necessarily the thing itself but an idea why is that important because of things like this because remember there's a light and there's the darkness. There's a reason why we deny these things. Because we know when we go into the scriptures and we look at the descriptions that were given to us, the idea that comes up in your mind, because when, when somebody describes, you got to understand how things work. When somebody describes something to you that you haven't seen, your mind immediately comes up with an idea. It brings all these things together and comes up with an idea of what the, you know, that thing on that person looks like. And that's where that's exactly what the Heavenly Father, you know, wanted us to. He wanted us to have an idea. All right. Another word for idea is image. All right. It was important for us to have an image of our in our minds to what Yahweh Shai looks like. Not necessarily knowing having the exact photo, the exact picture, but the concept, the idea. So it's not going off to have, you know, this because this is not. And we always say. Right, I right, so like it. I almost went. We are. We always say. What do we always say? We always say that this is not exactly. This is not the Lord. We said this is an, an image, an idea of what the Lord looks like, and we're not going off for that because that's what we were given. We were given in Revelation one and thirteen. We were given an idea, an image, an idea of what Yahushua looks like. And we supposed to, and what does that do to an individual, to an Israelite who's lost, Jeremiah 17 and 4, who's lost his nationality, was, was separated from his power, was given false images, false ideas of what the Lord looks like. And has been running around captive for over 500 years with, with, with no hope whatsoever. Well, guess what? When you get the idea, the image, right, an image, an idea, a concept of what the Lord truly looks like, guess what it does? It brings about this thing called hope. All right? And what is hope? It says hope. When you look up hope, it says what? To have trust. And also, this is what I want right here. Hope, the true definition of hope is confidence in the future. Why do you think that Jake is out here dying left and right, killing each other, doing the, the, the stupid, crazy, dumb-ish that Jake is out here doing so-called Negro, Hispanics, and Native Americans. The majority of our people are reckless as hell because they have no hope. And even when, you know, things hit the fan, they go back to their Christian church. What do they see? This is what they see. 
this is what they went back to when Jake is facing hard time. He's facing some, you know, some, uh, 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 you know, some big numbers. He goes back to this, to some false images and it breaks him down because it's like, well, the man, the devil that the Bible speaks of is bringing me down. But then I got to go to and I got to pray to an image of I got to look at an image of a man who looks just like the devil to come and deliver me. And there is no hope in that. There is no hope in that. All right. But hope is truly what hope is truly confidence in, in, in the future. All right. Especially the most high and his son. That's what hope does. All right. And that's why his image was, you know, a description of Yahweh Shah was given to us for hope. All right. So I'm, I'm going to close out with this. This is um, Romans 5 and 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with the most high through our Lord Hamashiach Yahweh by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of the most high. So we rejoice in hope. All right. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also knowing that tribulation work of patience and patience experience and experience hope and hope maketh not ashamed because of the the love of the most high is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, which is given unto us. All right. So and that's basically the point of the lesson. Again, I I know you um, sincere brothers, man, um, you know, we edify, you know, just had to do it again. And uh, there's some new things that I that, that I brought up this time. That was brought up this time, this time through the spirit. But basically, you know, that's that's what it is. That's the reason why we have when we have the signs, we have those images. We understand that, you know, that's not going off according to Exodus 20 and 4. All right. If you create an image and you bow down to it, then you are going off. But as far as having a camp sign or a sign of an idea image of what your house shall looks like. You're not going off because the Ark of the Covenant is a graven image. The altar that the priest and Aaron set up with specific dimensions is a graven image. But as long as the graven image ordained by Yahweh Bashim Hashanah, light and righteousness, that's okay. You're not going off. So that's all I want to bring forth. And again, um, you know, Bakit Yahweh, Bakit Yahweh Double honors to our apostles, elders, a great millstone. Shalom, salutation to you, sincere Akims across the four winds, pushing the truth, sincerity of heart. And um, again, the word, even the word idol, look up the word idol. You know, as a matter of fact, let's look, because, you know, that's another thing that be tripping, Jake. Jake, just, just got to look up words, man. All right. You look up the word idol, it says what? Image. It says image of deity. But the, the thing is, is the word there is image. Okay. That's what the word idol means. The word idol means image. It doesn't necessarily mean something wicked. All right. Because I'm a guy from a DC camp. Shalom.